Hello, my name's Luna, and welcome to episode 8 of The Ship in Truth, where we ship things and lick things as well. Oh, Luna. <laughs> oh, thank you, Luna. Uh, <laughs> guest appearance from Luna, uh, oh. Angelina's uh, new-ish uh, uh, little pug, little baby pug. For those who are watching the episode, of course, you'll be able to... Uh, see the video. Maybe we'll have her on a little bit later to hear her uh, breathe a little bit and stuff. Or snore when she passes out. <laughs> exactly. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to episode eight of the Sip and Truth. Oh, we got the Dunkings. We did. You know, just repping Dunkin' Donuts today. Thank you. Uh, we we listened back to the recording uh, last last time and. There was a weird audio interference, and he was saying that we weren't sipping on anything. So um, maybe that's why mm. I did. I picked him up. I said we have to sip on something this time. Let's go to Dunkin'. <laughs> well, today we have a, some exciting <laughs> stuff. I mean, if you guys don't remember last time when we left off, we were talking about a new show that we started watching, Traitors. Traitors. Let me also say this: when we were talking last, Kanan was saying, "Hey, since you're here, we can catch up on the episodes or finish the season." Um, and he's like, "I." And I have Peacock that has commercials. And I was like, oh, that's such a bummer. I don't I don't want to do that because my yeah. Peacock doesn't have commercials. And he's like, I just, don't, I just don't want to pay for the ad, no, uh, for I, ad for you. Yeah, I get it. You're also like there's only uh, three commercials or about a minute. So yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah, that was the longest minute I ever experienced <laughs> watching the show. Because uh, it's like such a cliffhanger, like something dramatic is happening, and then I have to hear a commercial for a minute about Claritin. <laughs> right. Well, that 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 is true, but it's nice. It gives your brain a break. You know what I mean? From I like I've been watching The Office, and it's like, mm-hmm. okay, like it's nice to have a little bit of a break so I can be on my phone mm-hmm. and not have to like focus, and then I'm back into it. You know? No. But I do hate ads for the most part. Yeah. But Peacock, it's not so <clears throat> bad. Next time we'll use my Peacock so that. Yeah, give me your login. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> we are also filming at my new apartment. Hey. Hey. So, uh, you know, we have quite a nice setup. We're not going to do a tour, but. Uh, not today, at least. We should do uh, like a little welcome to my crib thing once we both get situated. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. We and, can do a tour of yours. Tour. Mine's going to take a while, so we'll just do a tour of yours first. Yeah. Good. Go. Oh, oh wow. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Luna just took a poop, <laughs> but she did it on her pee or her little pee pee pad. So our first sponsor today is from Jane. Okay. And uh, without further ado, Jane, uh, take it away. Hi, I'm Jane, and if you're like me, you think about frogs at least ten times a day: the bullfrog, the copse gray tree frog, zebras. Well, why not do something about it? I have a small business called Tiny Frog Studio, and once a month you can receive cool stickers like these. And these. Oh, look at these ones. And for all you listeners out there, I'm showing pictures of my frog stickers. And if frogs aren't your thing, no worries. I also sometimes send egg, cow, and juice. To learn more, just search Tiny Frog Studio on Google, or search Tiny Frog Studio on Patreon itself. Thanks, Kane and Nana, for letting me be today's sponsor. Back to you, too. Yes, Tiny Frog Studio. Check mm-hmm. it out on Patreon. Yes. Uh, it's it's really cool. I subscribe to it. I have a couple of cool stickers. They're on my computer. I can show you right here. I have a little uh, Aww, Silly cute. Goose Juice sticker that I like to keep on, my, uh, on the corner of my uh, computer. Okay. If you just look up Tiny Frog Studio, you'll see uh, all that info. All right, so traders. All right. So we watched, you know, the episodes. And we well, I watched season two. I didn't watch. Um, same. Yeah. Both on the I same season. I didn't watch the first season. Anna, you did though, didn't you? I only watched a few episodes when I was doing my Lego set, oh my and I God. heard season two was be- like better, better for whatever yeah. reason. So I started that. This show was so intense as yeah. well. The thing that I, you know. Was expecting, and what I said last time in the episode is just like, you know, it's very cutthroat. It's very like, but it's also very entertaining. So at the end, but I was on the side of the traitors. I Same. wanted the traitors <laughs> to oh, win. Yes, 100%. I didn't want the faithfuls to win. And I, I'm not going to spoil what happens at the end, but like throughout the whole season, it like Peter was, you know, he was very smart with mm-hmm. his uh, tactics. Tact- yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the ending really got me, and I was really frustrated because there was somebody. 
<laughs> that ending had us on. I was like yelling in my living room. Like it was like one surprise after the next. I yeah. was like, wait, what? Anna and I, during the finale, we were watching the finale roughly around the same time. Yeah. <clears throat> it was like very, uh, you know, just on the edge of our seats. Like what's going to happen? Who's going to go? Who's going to survive? And yeah, it was just a really thorough and fun show. And Alan, Alan Cumming, he's he's such a oh, I love him. He's such a cool guy. After I left your uh, your house that day, I think we were like maybe two or three episodes left to finish. Right. So I think I finished it a little before you. So you were sending me <laughs> yeah. messages like yeah. it was just like one after the what? What is she doing? Oh God, buddy, it's crazy. Just wait. Oh no. Oh my god! I'm just gonna keep this recording. I chose MJ. What? It was so good. I'm just like, oh, buddy, just wait. It's not just, even done yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, right when I think it's like, oh, okay, well, there's nothing that can possibly happen, and then they somehow make it worse. I'm just, I'm mad at the the people that were left. <laughs> Because they made really stupid decisions. and uh, I don't think it was a sh- stupid decision. I think it was strategic what they did. You can't be mad at them for playing the game. But They yeah. said that's at the end of it. They're just like, those were the real traitors at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, like at the Talkback episode, I don't know if you watched. Did you watch the Talkback? I talk just back? watched bits and pieces. The Talkback episode, like she was still bitter about it. Oh, yeah. She said she unfollowed him like right afterwards. <laughs> She's like, yeah, we're not. You know what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what and you did. And I get that. But honestly, you're going into a game. Like, you know, like, you're there to play the game. Yeah, that's true. Like, they yes, could, There could are... have been another recruit. You never know. Yeah. But either way, I I loved it. I hope I can't wait for season three to happen. I was, they have, like, the fanny, fantasy cast that they're putting up of who they think they may ask to come. Ooh. So. Oh, uh, who would you want to be on it? Well, the ones they showed, I would be excited for. I don't, there was a show on Bravo um, called Mob Wives. So there was a character on there that's really cutthroat that they potentially were thinking about bringing. Hmm. Any of the housewives I'd be down for. I mean. I'm trying to think from Love Island who I would, who I would, who I would want from Love Island on the show. It's so funny because Ekin Sue, who's on this season, Mm -hmm. she's like one of those people that like you remember. You are a liar, actress, go the fuck out. Maybe Callum. Callum is a very popular uh, Love Island star, and he came back this past, you know, for the season. Mm-hmm. So he's popular, but I don't know if he's very drama heavy. You know what I mean? Or maybe Wes. I could see Wes maybe uh, being on there. I don't know. I don't know who any of these people are. I'm so <laughs> okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. But if you haven't watched it, I know there's a few people. Well, there was actually one of our friends did watch it right after we had this podcast. She's like, I had to see what you guys were who? talking about. Jane. Oh, Jane. And, yeah, she watched it right and after. And Jane's watching season and one. She loved it. Yeah. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Jane's already on season one. And I was like, I don't know if I want to, you know, jump on it. But, you know, I'll, well, have, to get into I'll it. have to check out season one. Check it out. It's on Peacock. No commercial. Pay for the premium <laughs> subscription, please. <laughs> All right, so let's segue into uh, movies because mm-hmm. we've seen a few movies since uh, since our last podcast. Yeah, we talked about in last episode about Dune, and uh, you know we're trying to schedule to make that work, and we saw it. We did at Universal City Walk eh. at ten thirty at night, <sighs> technically eleven because aye, aye, aye. AMC has like half an hour of of uh, trailers, and we were. We were pretty close to the things I the do front. to hang out with my friends. <laughs> we when? saw it in seventy millimeter near the front, almost, and the screen was just maybe so like four huge. rows up from the front. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I had saw it originally at the Chinese theater, yeah. and I, I prefer to to watch it there again. I did not enjoy it at the IMAX, and maybe it was because I was so close. Yeah, I don't also like that it was so tall, which we know it's the tallest theater. Scale wise, like the the movie itself was mm-hmm. amazing, yes. but it was like it's hard for me to focus when I'm sitting so close to the screen. It's my, a lot for me to like was literally like <laughs> this the entire time. I had to like move my head, at, you know, like to look at things. You, you but know, it was like, fine. fine. It was fine. We went. We got yeah. to hang out together. We got to watch. It was cool. What yeah. I thought was a cinematically a beautiful movie. Yeah, I I personally I like the film a lot. I don't know if I would like want to watch it at home to be honest yeah yeah okay but just because of like how how great everything looks in the theater Mm -hmm. but yeah i loved well the storyline was kind of you know like 
I had not seen the first Dune. I still haven't seen the first Dune. And I wanted to go in intentionally not knowing anything. <clears throat> and I still understood it. I, I felt like I got a good grasp on like what Dune is all about and who Dune is. <laughs> At one point, Brendan leaned over to me and he was like, is that Dune? And I was like, I don't know. Dune is not a person. Though. Yeah, but then, but then I was like, I don't know. You know more than oh eight. I don't know who Dune is. Yeah, and I then think... he started laughing. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. And there was definitely one point where you turned to me um, and you're just like, wait, what's going on? And I was like, you should have watched the first movie. Yeah, yeah. It was with the hand in the, the box. And if you guys have I was like, seen it, then you know. I'm like, what the hell is the significance of the hand going in the box? Did you ever find out? No, I, oh, I don't okay. know. I guess you got to watch the first one. Well, it doesn't matter because, spoiler alert, he's dead. So it doesn't really matter, right? I guess he gave her a child to know. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what it means. But yeah, I loved, there were, there were like certain scenes that I was just like, wow, this is like, yeah, truly spectacular. Yeah. I love the worm riding scene. Oh my gosh. And uh, uh, and I leaned over to you at some point. Oh <laughs> yes. Inappropriate. We're trying to watch a movie and this guy is cracking jokes. So Zadea <laughs> Zadea her character had sex with Timothy Chalamet's character and they're in the tent and I leaned over to Anna and I'm like, so I guess she rode his worm and <laughs> I literally was like, I can't. Let me, I need to focus. It wasn't one of my best moments, but it came to me, and that's what's important. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it was just really beautiful. The The music was so good. Oh, God. Ha- shout I, out Hans Zimmer for the, your... Hans? Hans? Hans, Hans Zimmer. Hans Sorry, Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Hans, Hans, Hans Zimmer. Zimmer. Hans Z- Zimmer for... Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, I, I like, I loved just the... I don't know. The cinematography was so good. Like some of the shots and the framing of them. The whole fight scene, I didn't know until later. Oh, the infrared. Yeah, yeah. I had no clue. Yeah. Because I was like, why is it like colored this way? But I was, I liked it regardless. Mm-hmm. And then Anna was like, it's an infrared. I'm like, oh, that is sick. Yeah. I love the idea of just like filming, you know, shots in a, a big old desert. Yeah. That, yeah, that were really, yeah, that was, was crazy because there were some scenes when they were like going up and down, like I guess the dunes of the desert. Yeah. Like, that's really them, like, like uh, essentially walking or running up. And I'm like, that's... I would be wiped out after, like, two steps of yeah. just in the sand that deep. Yeah, what <clears throat> what got me was... And you you saw you see it happen a couple times. And I'm not going to ex- explain, like, what the situation is. But, like, they're literally laying in the ground underneath the oh, sand. Yeah. And then they just pop, pop up, up. And they're running. And Freeman, I'm like, oh, my desert. God. Like, that's, that's intense. Like, that's amazing and yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I would not last out, out in the dunes. I mean, so. you grow up in that environment, you get accustomed to the ways of the deserts. Oh, that's true. You can become yeah. a freeman where <laughs> <laughs> it was. A, it was such a good movie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. If anybody's seen the original, the David Lynch, this was oh god, yeah, substantially better. But it's also, I think I was talking to one of our friends from work about this, where where we have just came uh, essentially came from in like cinema itself. Like, we should watch a trailer of the original David Lynch one, and I just want to get your expression on, like, just what <laughs> I, it looks like compared to where yeah. we're at now, and it's freaking insane. <laughs> I saw I saw um, a clip on TikTok of, like, the shield training scene or the shield oh, fight okay. scene. Oh, okay, yeah, where they, like, yeah. I the guess. CG did look really bad. Um, Even the worm scene? Oh, my I didn't God. see the worm scene, so. The Harkin character? It's his. Oh yeah, we'll need to watch a clip. Okay. You guys know if you haven't seen, go watch a trailer of the original. You'll you'll understand. All right, all right. I I really liked it, and I'm usually like I probably wouldn't have seen. As you can tell, I haven't seen the first Dune. I probably wouldn't have seen the second one unless like you know. Yeah, I was approaching ex- the why not and just being like, you know what? Yeah, I was excited. I was glad that you finally got to see it. I was really oh. excited that we got to see it, and yeah. I was just like, I, I hope he enjoys it. Yeah. If anything, at least. Cinematically, I feel like this is a really good movie to watch. Yeah, I think story wise, there was some stuff I'm like, this is kind of outrageous. The turn of one of the characters, I I think it was too sudden, and I think it's kind of weird. But the good acting all around. My favorite character uh, was oh, what's his name? The the one that was always like the one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, oh, yeah. Now it's gonna bug me. I'm gonna have to look it up. He, he was, was just my like favorite. The, the comedic relief of everything, I feel like. A hundred percent. Javier B- Bardem. Bardem, yes. Uh, yeah, I love him. He is so good in this role. 
And visual effects. I mean, their their eyes looked pretty good. This from the spice in the desert. I still don't, <laughs> wait. What is the spice? Is it just like? Well, it's the spice. Um, well, it one helps with like the outer worlds. It drives like essentially the aircrafts and all that. It's essentially power for them. And then the spice in the desert. Um, they use it for food. You, I mean, can I've, you eat the spice? Yeah, because remember, yeah, in the second one, because it was in the food when he when he was showing his mom. Oh, and that's when he started seeing yeah. those. Mm-hmm. Oh, because so if you're not in the used first one, it. he doesn't. He's not exposed to that much spice. No, because he doesn't live there. He's not from there. He lives oh, in a ship in a different. He's from like Waterworld or something. Essentially, something like that. <laughs> he lives in a planet where there is water. Essentially, that that's kind of wild. Mm-hmm. I should probably watch the first one then at some point. Yep, but that <clears throat> it was great. I'm glad we had a good time. No, we asked for the. The Doom popcorn buckets. And they said, no, no more popcorn buckets. And we said, well, when are you going to get them back in stock? And they said, never. <laughs> never. Yeah. And I think they're happy for that. I think uh, I think a lot of... But I was almost like embarrassed to ask. I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to ask. You I, ask. I walked over and I was like, hey, <laughs> it's probably going to be a no. And then they're immediately like, no, we don't have any Doom popcorn like, buckets. Damn it. <laughs> I was like... I guess I'll just get a regular popcorn then. Yeah. If you guys haven't watched it, I highly suggest you watch it. I would say watch it at the Chinese Theater and get um get seats that are good. Silence! <laughs> See what I did there? Jeez. I'm going to add a little boom to my voice as well. so it. Yeah, know. so it takes me aback? Yeah. Got it. Wait, let's do it again and then you pretend to be like, whoa. Okay. Silence! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Everything just falls over. But All then right. we saw a much better movie, in my opinion. Oh, fuck. How dare you? <laughs> so we, we have somebody um, that's a good friend of ours that... Um, Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Who's been wanting us to go watch a movie at the New Bev, which is a Quentin Tarantino mo- uh, theater on Beverly, and I don't know what the cross streets are. Yeah. And they do a lot of midnight showings. So a few weeks back, he had asked and said, hey, they were showing Death Proof. Um, which is a Quentin Tarantino movie with Kurt Russell and some other stars at the time. Rosario Dawson. Yep. And I forget the other people's names That's that were okay. on there. But um, he's like, we should go watch this uh, midnight show. And so we all agreed. We're like, yeah, why not? It's a good time. Now, as the movie was getting closer to the time to come, there was another one of our friends that recently was moving to a different position and, and work and whatnot. And he was like, well, I want to go uh, have some fun before yeah. we watch th- the movie. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was a very bad idea for us to go get drinks <laughs> before a midnight movie. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I didn't drink anything because, you know, I don't really drink that much. <clears throat> well, I drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I was still in control. Yeah. But there yeah. was some of us that maybe uh, were partying a little too hard. <laughs> so this friend of ours, he had five old fashions that night to celebrate yeah, when I showed up, I showed up late because I think you guys were there maybe since eight o'clock and the night before because I wanted to hang out and <clears throat> watch Dune with you guys. I watched a oh, 1030 yeah. movie and you... I had to be up the next day at like 6 a.m. to essentially get ready to go to work. I worked my shift. I went home and rested for maybe like two hours and got ready to do it all over again because guess what? I had to work the next day Ugh. and be up at 6 a.m. Dude, yeah. <clears throat> Doing a... Uh... Yeah, almost midnight showing of Dune, and then the next day doing a midnight showing. Yeah, but I show That's up just so much. I wanted yeah, to support. You show up, and, my and I was there. We were all supporting. We had a fun time. We had yeah, well, you had drinks. Yeah, I think finally it was time for us to leave. Oh no! Well, one, hold on, we forgot a part as well. Well, yes, I, essentially I go to the table, and there's uh, for all the old fashions they use like a real nice ice ball that they put in the glass. Um, so there was like this table you were sitting at and it was just lined up with all these, uh, empty old fashioned. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be that kind of night. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know who got a cigar for this person. We, I did. You, you're the one that got. Yeah, I did. Then I blame you for everything that happened after the fact. <laughs> we go, fault. we go outside. We're like, oh, let's go outside. Let's see what everyone's doing. And there's literally a small group of us and it's all these dudes basically just, Puffing on the cigar. Yeah, One, change. it's a sl- it's a slobber fest on the end of <laughs> end of the cigar. Of course, no one cut the butt of the cigar. Oh my it's god! It's all these boys trying to be men, and I was just like, <laughs> I didn't partake in any of this, by the way. I was not a part of this. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just like, this is all gonna mix real, real bad. I can already feel it. A hundred percent. Our friend yeah. had 
an armful of Sharpie tattoo of <laughs> things on his knuckles. There's a penis. There's somebody that there he was in love with on yeah, his yeah, arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, why? And he kept saying, hey, sign my arm. Hey, si- yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, sign my arm, man. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then I finally, I think... We're like, okay, you guys, it's like 11 something. We got to get to the theater because this is first come, first come seats. It's not like AMC where you can you reserve, reserve your spot. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we made it. We made it right <laughs> on time. Well, yeah. I So uh, 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 me, you, and Angelina, we mm-hmm. got there first. Yeah. Uh, while, while we left and everybody was like, you know, finishing up their talks and stuff. And I had my own separate ticket. So I got in, but then I had to hold <laughs> seats for seven people, and we had to wait for the other people to show up at the same time, uh, which was horrible because, you know, like, I'm they picked the wrong person to do this. You know, like, I, I feel so awkward having to be like, sorry, like, I'm holding seats for seven people. That's all people. you have to say. Sorry, I'm holding seats for seven people. But that, but that's just like, I don't <laughs> want to be put in that situation where I have to deal with, you know, like, oh, F you, you know, type of thing. Um, luckily that didn't happen, but, uh, a couple people, you know, there was one guy who sat in our row just, to, you know, at oh, the, the end. Oh, the one that I was sitting next to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just like, mm, 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 whatever. And like, I'll just save these then. And I was like, oh God. <clears throat> well, anyway, so then we all show up. This movie theater has been infamous for having the best popcorn. Oh, yeah. So what what did you think of the popcorn? Um, I thought it was... Well, one, it took us a long time to even get our snacks because that line was long. Yeah, as soon yeah. as we got in and we saw you, we're like, okay, well, now we're going to wait in line so we can get stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you, let me know what you want. And then... So we knew we were going to get popcorn and whatever drink. But then I saw, to my surprise... Which um I love this movie theater now, as they had vegan hot dogs. Yeah, I was like, hold on, Kanan, do you want a hot dog? A regular hot dog? But I'm like, I'm about to splurge on this yeah, vegan yeah. hot dog right now. She calls me. She's like, I'm in the front of the line. Quick, do you want a hot dog? Yes, yes or no? no. <laughs> <laughs> like, because yeah. beforehand you were just like, I just want about popcorn. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was like, do you want this? Yes or no? And you're like, yes. yes. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe I was just hungry as well, but it was delicious. So the way that the popcorn was described to me. And how they actually do it is they put in popcorn and then layer in butter and then put more popcorn and layer in butter, which I thought was really cool. Um, I think it was kind of wild that I gave you $30 and I came (laughs) back with like – I was like, oh, here's your change. It was like four bucks back. Yeah. I was like – how? it was two hot dogs and popcorn. Two hot dogs and popcorn. No, and then I think two drinks. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the actual theater itself was kind of nice. You know, snacks. The seats were not comfortable, unfortunately. No, but it's I'm tall and I, I struggle with you know, people behind me. I don't wanna I don't wanna sit up too tall so that they could actually see. Um and then, you know, my only complaint with the theater, besides the seats, I think, you know, because it's Quentin Tarantino owned, of course the staff and everybody advertise like they're they're very like in with the cool you know, they're drinking the Kool Aid just like I don't know. Uh, very snobby. No. Oh. It felt very snobby and prudish. A, a mm. little bit. This is, this film, it's like, you know, is his fourth film. We will kick you out. We will ban you for life if, if you, like, are talking or, if, you know, if your phone goes off. It's like, well, sorry. Like, it, it, it you know. But. I, I didn't like, I didn't, it felt I, kind of rude. I don't think that was rude. I think that's just, I know we're going to be talking about other things etiquette. I think that's movie theater. Honestly, I I think about us in the times like when we watched Mean Girls, we should have all definitely got out because that was the worst theater etiquette ever. We were at But we had a fun time. We did, but I'm sure other people didn't appreciate our fun time. Yeah, well. I told uh, our one of our buddies Ari he would have loved that movie theater because he's all about don't be on your phone shut up. Yeah. There's so many times I've been set next to him like drunk or high and I'm just rambling off or talking to somebody across and he's literally like you need to shut up. Well, well, here's what's <laughs> wild though. It's like I usually don't do that stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when someone tells me to to <laughs> not do it, then I get defiant oh. and I'm like I'm gonna do it anyway. I wanted you know to so mean? bad because there was a point, and I know Kaden's gonna get to it, where yeah. we literally one person in particular was past the bug out. Yeah. <laughs> and just how he was, it was priceless. And I wanted to take a picture so bad, mm. but I didn't want to be rude or have the person next to me be like, they literally just said. So I just had a it's right here, all mental in my memory. Yeah. yeah, so let's go into the actual movie Death Proof. Okay. I 
thought first when it, when it was first brought up to me, I thought it was a different movie. I thought it was Planet Terror, which I found out later because I was like, "Oh, Death Proof is that the one with the the girl with the gun for a leg?" And oh then, my god! Uh, which I think did they show a preview to that? I think that yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, because it was Grindhouse, right? Grindhouse. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah. I that I I, I want to watch. I barely remember it. I remember did. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then they did show, of course, trailers before the movie that were like possessed car related. Uh, like yeah, all Christine, of them. you never seen Christine before? No, I've never uh, seen Stephen Christine. King. There was a the Stephen King, which I I was the only one who laughed at this during the trailer. But Stephen King's like talking to the camera, and he's just like, you know, this is the first movie I've ever directed, and you know, it's like, it, you know, I write books, might as well, you know, direct something. And then at some point, he looks at the camera, and then he points. He's like. I'm going to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> I'm going to scare the hell out of you. And then I l- burst out laughing and nobody else is. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm going to get kicked out. this guy out. out. <laughs> I No, Stephen King was like a household commodity for us. My mom uh, loved his books. So there was books everywhere. I think that's when I uh, oh read God. it for the first time because she just had it. And then obviously <laughs> we watched his movie or any TV series he did. I love that guy. Respect. Yeah, this guy yeah. was not respectful for the king. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> shame. For shame. <laughs> I like Stephen King stuff. I mean, no, I don't but watch it was it was it. it was funny. And honestly, I was probably munching down on my hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I missed half that trailer. I was like, damn, this is so such a good. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. So the movie itself. Um, I mean, oh. at this point, I'm gonna spoil stuff just because it's been don't, out for so don't, long. Don't spoil stuff. Just tell what us how you, you Just tell us how you feel. It's about why, why can't it. I spoil it? Because you haven't seen the full thing? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I actually need to go back and watch it because I had a little oopsie. <laughs> you can't, oopsie, you the... can't say that because it's going to make people think that you like shit yourself. <laughs> no, that definitely didn't happen. I, but, uh, I had a little oops. My oopsie was I basically knocked, I knocked out as well. Yeah. I tried so hard to stay awake, guys. I really did. Because all, because everybody had drinks and so everybody's like tired. No, well, anyway, yeah, so yeah. the movie itself, um, uh, should I just give a general overview and then review it? Just tell us how, how you thought on a scale of one to ten. Um, it ten was, being the best movie we saw ever, one being obviously. It, it was a two. <laughs> I'm giving it a solid two because there was some stuff that was actually like kind of good, but most of it was bad. Okay. Uh, I, you know. You didn't like, I loved Kurt Russell in this movie. That's, that's <laughs> where the two comes okay. in. <laughs> <laughs> he gives us the two. <laughs> <laughs> he makes it from a one to a two because he's, he, he's the villain. And for some reason, like I want to root for him the whole time. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, he's. I don't know, he, but he's really creepy, and that's par- mostly in part because of Quentin Tarantino uh, in general, mm-hmm. um, who wrote and directed this film. Um, there's and, and it was the extended uh, edition, so I don't know like oh, what yeah. the original version is, but what I saw was just people talking in a car for long periods of time, showing a lot of feet shots. Yeah, I don't know and how then about that. a lot of talking. There's like a lap dance that happens and then action happens and then it's back to talking in a car again and, that's and then more feed asleep. stuff. And then, you know, it's just and then like so after the fir- first chase mm-hmm. and then they get to the next group of, of women. Yeah. Like they're all talking in the car, you know, uh, doing stuff. Then they stop. Uh, they're at that gas station you know, feet out the window, and then Kurt Russell's character is like, you know, getting close to her feet, and I'm like, this is just Quentin Tarantino, what he would want to do. Uh, but then they go into a diner, and then they start talking again. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't mind if this is character development or if if it's just like giving a little bit of insight, mm-hmm. but it went on for yeah, yeah, so yeah. long. And uh, so, like, throughout the movie, I have Angelina on my left, and I have you on my right. So, like... For most of this film, I'm leaning over to Angelina. I'm like, oh my god, like I, the, you know, like this is way too much sexualization of of women, uh, or and like you know, just little mm-hmm. things here and there. And I know I'm not supposed to be talking, but you know, I just lean in, mm-hmm. give my two cents, and like I, this is so dumb. My favorite, for some reason, my favorite part was the first chase scene when they all died. <laughs> Oh, okay. Rose McGowan. That's who the girl was in the car the first time. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Um, but then it gets to the part where they're in the diner. Uh, the second group of women are mm-hmm. in the diner talking. 
And it was it was funny because every single conversation, sorry, the first set of women and the second group of women, they both like were just talking about their sex lives for, mm-hmm. for most of it. And I'm like, you know, there's you don't have to always like be talking about a guy or having to do all that, you know, do, have anyway. So then it gets to the second group of girls. They're in the diner talking for like maybe 10 minutes. And then I just am like, I've been kind of frustrated throughout this whole movie every now and then and i'm just like it's like 1 30 in the morning and i'm tired so i'm i i just left this is like deuces i just left i left the theater i'm like there's like there's probably something cool that happens <laughs> later on mm-hmm. i don't really care i just like you know and i lived like a mile away so i just scooted home mm-hmm. i I did not even stay for it. I I didn't yeah. did not like it. I woke up as you were leaving. And I was just <laughs> yeah. like, oh, maybe he's no. Yeah. But, but well, and before I left too, I looked around. I saw that I'm gonna say names. everybody was. Brendan asleep. was asleep. Mm-hmm. Adarsh was asleep. You were asleep. You know. I had my. I was listening with my ears. <laughs> <laughs> the heck. I didn't well, I'm glad that they work. That's good. Uh, I heard everything that was happening. I, I get it. I get what you were saying. It was long, and I think that's why I think I fell asleep because I'm like, all right, I just the action part was great. But I think he's notorious also for having that. If you think about Pulp Fiction in the beginning, it's I all seen Pulp oh, Fiction. amazing. Mm. But the beginning, actually, the interactions with Samuel L. Jackson and um, John Travolta is just a lot of talking. Reservoir Dogs, my favorite in Quentin Tarantino movie, all talking. Mm. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a lot of talking. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I think, yeah. I, think, I feel bad because Robin, I think, really thoroughly... and Well, Robin loves this stuff. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, I think yeah. he was up, and I can imagine him down there at that last seat, like, smiling, like, yeah. And we're <laughs> all is, just a bunch of chumps. Yeah. I think, I think for me, when you're writing dialogue scenes, it's good to have the characters, like, kind of flesh out their, their character. You understand them, but... I think there's a time limit. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Uh, and this was also the extended version, so I'm I'm yeah, really curious yeah. to see what the edited version would look like. Yeah, I don't anticipate it would be like that, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I I've seen some really good Tarantino films like uh, Hateful Eight, oh, yeah, Django. Uh, there's one other one that I've seen. Oh, Inglorious Bastards. Oh, I love those, Inglorious Bastards. I love those, but Death Proof on my list. I was just like, not a fan. That's but right. there's one thing that I found really funny, and I, I pointed this out to you and Brendan and also to other people as well. The funniest part for me, he's stalking these group of girls, mainly this one girl, but this group of girls. And this one random woman asks him if, you know, she if he can take her home. So she gets in the passenger seat and he's walking to his, you know, driver's or his driver side. And he sees the group of girls, their car drive away. So he lights up a cigarette. He sees them drive away. And then, like, he takes a puff. And then he looks at the camera and then flicks away the cigarette that he just lit up. And I thought that was the funniest part for me. It's yeah. like, it like yeah, no. why did you even light the cigarette just to do mm-hmm. one? And then, but, I, like, him looking at the camera was Shot the camera. I think yeah. he had a, well, I think on the last scene that you didn't weren't there for he kind of did something similar that last scene, oh really the last little scene with the girls were, was great and mm. i really forced myself to stay awake mm. well it was also really cold in that theater too so i remember at one point i was like trying to like curl into my sweater um and then after you left i think brendan also got up um to excuse himself and i was literally like stay up please just stay up for the last <laughs> few i'm sure this is almost over just you can do it and i it was so hard but i finished it and i couldn't wait to get home Oh my God. Yeah. I think this also happened at Dune. You're like, it's cold. It's like, just bring a blanket. You know? I know, but I didn't think about it. Nobody ever brings a blanket to the I wasn't theater. really that cold at Dune. Maybe because I was, I don't know, but this theater, well, yeah, it was cold. <laughs> well, uh-huh. that's what you got to do. It's like, bring a blanket with you. And if you don't really actually use it, if you're like too warm, you could use it on the back of your head. It's a nice little pillow. Yeah. A little, possibly. little, little, uh, but um, oh, what did you think about Death Proof? From what I saw, I enjoyed it. I mean, again, I would watch it again, but I would watch the edited version. I don't think I would watch that the long Quentin Tarantino version again. Yeah, maybe I'll do that uh, tonight. Actually. <laughs> oh my God! No, you're watching Max Keeble's Big Move. That's what. <laughs> yeah, we're doing that. Sure. Um. Uh. But yo, so we watched that at the New Bev, and then we mm-hmm. have a movie coming up, which we'll talk about next time, which is going to be at his other theater that I think recently opened, Vista. The Vista. What are we watching? That's the Ghostbusters movie. Oh, oh! 
I saw something on TikTok about the Vista. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like, excited. They have good snacks there too. Yeah, so I'm excited for that. Oh, we're seeing Ghostbusters on Wednesday. <laughs> sorry, sorry, why are you nodding like that? Yes, we are because I need to go watch it at AMC because my mom really wants the Ghostbuster popcorn tray thing, Majiggy. You can just I've... go there and buy it. You don't have to. You don't have to buy a ticket to. Oh yeah, buy true. Something. But at, when am I going to be by an AMC? Oh, there's the, also the that horror right movie here. that's coming out next Friday that we have to get tickets for. The first Omen comes out the first next Omen. Friday. Omen, wow! So we have will fun be getting. With that. You're going. What do you mean? What the? Um, the, the whole entourage of us are are going. Um, and it's fine. You like we fell asleep. You can fall asleep. We got this. I so I I can barely take naps. Like it, it once I'm awake, I'm awake. And if you it's take hard a, a nap, to, only thirty minute nap, guys. It's what's been um, recommended. Researched. Yeah, researched and recommended. Yeah, I'll think about it. Okay, I'll we'll think see about it. But now to uh, the good stuff that that we have. Yes. Before we get to the good stuff, we have one more ad from again Tiny Frog Studio. Take it away, whoever's doing this ad. Ribbity news alert! Ready to add some hop to your mailbox? Introducing Tiny Frog Studio's monthly newsletter. Dive into a pond full of creativity with our fun and quirky stickers, including our signature frog collection. Each month, leap into a new theme and let our stickers hop straight to you. From adorable amphibians to quirky designs, our stickers are guaranteed to make a splash. Don't miss out on the fun. Subscribe now at Tiny Frog Studio on Patreon and let the frogtastic adventures begin. Wow, what a good ad, huh? That's pretty That's pretty amazing how they do that. Um, so we are here to talk about – we are, in, of course, in my new apartment. Anna is currently in, in that process of eventually packing up to move to her new apartment. And I and Anna brought this to me, and you know I'll throw it to you in a sec. But you know, there's a lot of things that happens while you live in an apartment, whether it's you know maybe loud neighbors, dogs shitting outside the apartment without picking up their poop. Anna, talk to me today about. Uh, what our next subject is. Yeah, so uh, essentially it's apartment etiquette. And I really didn't think about this too much until it just recently happened. Um, Like Kaden was mentioning, I'm in the middle of a move. And right now my mom is down here. She usually visits. She will be moving here. Um, But it was funny because we recently had some new, I guess, neighbors move into our apartment complex. And, I mean, there's not really very much that bugs me uh, about it. Oh, perfect. Um, but it was funny because I was at work and my mom sends me a message. And essentially in her message, she was just like, it's about to go down at your apartment. Your neighbors are about to rumble. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. She did say the word rumble. Right? And I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? So she sends me this picture. And it's a picture that someone had posted on our gate, which is a sliding gate. In the, and we'll put this picture up. But essentially yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, it says on the note, not a parking spot. Don't be a jerk. And then it says from like apartment residence. So the person who, and this was on the car. So that we found this note on the gate, but it was actually, the note was put on this person's car and I'll get to you why it was put there. Right. They wrote. The, so order, the, per, the person, the person whose car it was written on. Yes. Right. They wrote on the note and they said, <laughs> shut the fuck up and come talk to me personally. No need to put shit in my, on my car. <laughs> I was like, what? Look. Yeah. So let me set up the seed. So on our street, um, obviously there's a driveway to drive into our gate. And we used to have parking in the back, but our apartment complex took it away from us because they wanted to have more people in the unit. So they said, let's take away your parking spot and let's put more apartments back there. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, hoo. That's yeah. another reason why we're moving. <clears throat> so essentially uh we still use this driveway to i will drive up so i can like get my groceries out of the car just to put them up real quick or people will drive back there if they have something they're picking up whatever we use it i parked there <clears> once oh yeah, yeah. when the, we can't find parking and somebody's come over i'm literally like hey just drive in but we're always respectful and I'm, we're not there like all hours of the day when right. it's street sweeping i park my car there if i can't find parking because i'm literally not going to circle the block so, I mean, there's stuff we use it for, but it's literally there for, like, maybe max two hours, no more than that. This person who recently moved in had his car just parked right in front of the driveway. So, no one could, I guess, drive in if they wanted to. Yeah. I mean, it didn't bother me. I mean, I could honestly care less. But that, that car's been parked there for days. Oh, my so, God. Yeah. Um, 
people just got upset and people put a note on this car and i was like "Ooh, i wonder who wrote it oh <laughs> so it's I, actually your mom secretly so or something. <laughs> I yeah. did. I thought it was my neighbor who actually lived below us. And I talked to him the other day and he's like, ooh, did you see what they wrote on the car? Oh, I was like, God. I did. Was it you? He's like, no, it wasn't me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have an idea of who it was, but I'm like, drama. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, who's technically in the right here? Because, of course, yeah. I, clearly the person parking in, in front of the gate is in the wrong here. But the note leaving, that's that's a hard thing because the person replied – Come talk to me personally. No need to put shit on my car. But it's like, do they know who this person yeah, is? Yeah, that's what how, I was, exactly how, what I was going to say. Like, how do you... I guess maybe... But also, okay. passive-aggressive note le- leaving. Is that like... Would it have been better if it just says, not a parking spot from apartment residence? Did we did we need to put, don't be a jerk? But that's true. There were, there were that's a little, a little bit of a personal attack yeah. there. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I could have I, I don't yeah oh I don't but know. also they're they're writing it speaking on behalf of the other apartment oh, yeah, residents yeah. as opposed to just <clears throat> the person who and they're being anonymous by not saying yeah. you know this person at this place uh, I mean I know whose car it is so I wonder if he's ever like looked at me and been like was it you listen again I, I don't care but I can uh, understand how it would make some people upset yeah but yeah, that was that was one of the the few that we have. Yeah, and we like we uh, well, Anna reached out to some people, and uh, apparently they have apartment stories as well of of people leaving signs. I personally have one as well. I think we'll go to mine next. Yes. Um, so I just moved into this apartment like a week ago, and this sign is already there, so I know it doesn't <laughs> pertain to me. Uh, but I thought it was funny because they put it up right after yeah. Kaden moved in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is from management and it says, Dear tenants, last night at around 6.30 p.m. I heard and felt a series of thumping sounds <laughs> that vibrated the walls and floor of my apartment. A next door neighbor knocked on my door asking what that was. I spoke to a few other tenants and they also heard the noises as well. This was not the first time I heard and felt noises coming from one of those units. We live in close quarters and it's an old building. Sound can carry through the walls easily. To the individual who's responsible, please be aware and courteous of others in the building. 6.30 p.m. Thumping sounds. What do you think it was? Listen, <laughs> thumping happens at all times of the day. Right? That's true. So, so uh, speaking of thumping sounds, like... I didn't realize this until literally yesterday. My window was open. Okay. So I was like, why am I hearing sounds from adjacent apartments? Why am I hearing sirens outside? Because the window was open. But I was hearing hearing, uh, Zoom calls. I was hearing lovemaking. I was hearing the works. So like I I completely get it. But again, uh, these types of notes are just – you know who's who's in the wrong here? I I guess you know you know that's I, tough. I feel like I think on our new uh, lease agreement it did say like quiet hours were from around this time to this time. Hmm. I feel like that's still early though. You know, get the thumping out before eight p.m. starts. Guys. <laughs> yeah, well, they were doing this at six thirty, so I think that they're. I think the people who are doing the thumping are in the right here. Yeah, they're trying to be mindful of the time. They don't want to do it too late. All right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> okay. And again, if you guys have any thoughts on this, please, you know, email us at thesippingtruth at gmail.com. You can go to our um, social. Yeah, go to our socials. Let us know. Or if you have something that you want to actually bring up, let us know. What do we do? Like, if something does bother us, do we make a complaint or just realize, hey, we're at an apartment where things like this can happen? So yeah. you're kind of signing up for that. Yeah, kind of like um, this next one. Well, we're like talk this, about <laughs> exactly. Talk about. If you want to read this one. Yeah, so this, this was from one of our other friends. Um, and again, I was talking about this with some people like when I was at work. And that's why I brought it up to people. And they're like, oh, yeah, I have stories. Let me send you what I got. <laughs> yeah. So they sent me this one. And this was in the elevator. And they have to use the elevator to essentially come down, I'm assuming, and, and leave their apartment. But it says, whoever keeps blasting their music in the mornings with their windows open into the atrium, please either close your windows or turn the music way down. We all love our music, but when it plays in the atrium and echoes and forces all of us to hear it, we shouldn't be able to hear your music in our apartment Then, our, when our doors are closed. And it says, thanks for listening. All right, so that's at least a little bit respectful. Right. Be like, hey, like we all love music. They're trying to get on their perspective. It's like, hey, we love our music, right. but you know, maybe be mindful of like, the environment that you're in right. giving a, at least a better perspective instead of being like don't be a jerk you know what right I mean? but, but but this is great but then, and this, 
again, makes sense. Like, I get it. So the, this must have been from the person who had uh, been playing the been music, playing maybe? The music, yeah. They taped uh, some earplugs <laughs> to the sign, and then they wrote in crayon, it looks like. What did they write? They said, buy a house, then ho. <laughs> I mean, you guys, this is, yes, when you're in an apartment, you're, you're li- like close quarters to everybody next to you, like across from you. Like sh- it happens. I've been paranoid because I've, th- that night you guys came over and we're like blasting fucking Muppet Treasure Island. I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh my yeah, God, yeah. I'm going to get complained about. Like <laughs> it's just some things. I'm just like, you, that was too good though. Bye, yeah. Hassan and Ho. <laughs> Yeah, that was – but the thing that got me was the earplugs <laughs> attached. It's like I'm not going to change me. You're going to change here's, – here's some help no. for you to, to, to not be so complained. Exactly. Uh, but I, I loved like the hoe. They, I love that too. To that. Yeah, it's um, true. My husband. It's also true. If, if, you're, if you're complaining about noise, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> thank you for that submission. We have a couple more. This one yes. comes from our – number one fan okay so this it looks like this is a looks like it's in a laundromat yes or like a laundry room in the apartment Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a little post-it note attached to looks like where you put the quarters in Mm -hmm. into the uh into the uh laundry machine it says and i'll tell you when it's underlined please return underlined the blue ikea bag underlined if you took it by mistake Leave on dryer machine. Leave bag on dryer machine. I had no laundry bag when I went to pick up my clothing. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's that. I mean, this seems like not as bad. Or like this person like genuinely was just like, hey, please return my bag. Yeah, um, but also like if you're doing laundry, you know what's your basket and what's not your basket. That's Just true. Just because you don't have a laundry basket doesn't give you the right to take my laundry basket. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. <laughs> and that. she had a. She said she had to take all her clothes just by her, and she she has to use the laundry at a different unit. It's not even her own unit because that I guess there's a jointed uh, unit, so it's not in theirs. But they have to walk to another one. So she literally oh. had to take the laundry out, walk out of that unit, and then into her own. No. See, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I I definitely agree with this person. Like the the person who wrote this sign. Like they did. Like this is deserved. Like I need my bag. Please bring it back. Yes. Um. It was nice. That, <clears throat> unless they thought it was like a trash bag, or someone thought it was uh, like a trash bag or IKEA's something. Ikea's are not trash bags. Yeah, but also maybe get a laundry bag that looks more like a laundry bag. First of all, know. how dare you? I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> yes, you are. I have like thousands. That's what I use my – when I have to go to the big laundromats, I take my Ikea bags. Yeah, I mean, well, I think for me it would just be like if it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. Yes, exactly. Like if, if you see a bag in there, you know, regardless of how I feel, like, yes, get an actual laundry bag. But also like if that's all that they have, let leave it be. Um, um, I will give an update on this. They got their laundry bag back. Oh, good. They did. Okay, so. good. The, so, note, the note worked. It was nice. They got their laundry bag a few days ago. All is well, because if not, I let them know I have extra Ikea bags, and I was just going to give them one of mine. But it worked out. So. Yeah. Or you could just, you know, like go to Ikea and pay $2 for another bag. Yeah. But that's $2 that you could use for uh, Dunkin' Skewers. Uh, <laughs> it could be for what you use to wash your laundry. So Exactly that. Yep. Yeah, $2 and quarters. <clears throat> All right. I'm excited for this next one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and me too. Now, uh, to set this up, Anna had said to this person, hey, leave it under a minute or leave it. Leave the story <laughs> to at least a minute, two minutes tops. And uh, this is five and a half minutes long. So we're going to see if this is the story is it's worth gonna be, five it's gonna minutes. It's going to be great, though. It's, it's going to be, be a great story. And are we going to say the name? Yeah, shout out Ajara. I want to choose. Thank you, Ajara. Yeah, one of our one of our number one listeners as well. I appreciate it. So I can't wait for this. All right. And without further ado, Ajara, talk to us. What's going on? Y'all, I don't do this, but <laughs> I had to tell one of my neighbors a piece of my mind. I had to give them a piece of my <laughs> mind because they were tweaking and repeatedly. Got to shut that shit down. <laughs> so basically, okay. one of my pet peeves is when someone sees me about to come into somewhere. It don't matter if it's a store. It don't matter if my it's my own building. It don't matter where it's at. You see me right behind you. Be courteous. Have manners. And keep the door open for me. 
so I could come in too. But don't close that mess purposely and act like I'm not trying to go to the same place you are. <laughs> Is this an apartment? So, yeah. essentially, there's um like a little old couple that lives in my building. First strike. And honestly, they look like a cute little couple. Aww. They always go on their little evening walks. Cute. Um, so I see them often. Mm. Always see them like regularly. And then know she lives there then. I would like to say that I have a very unique appearance. I don't think I can be mistaken for anybody else. Therefore, if you see me in your building multiple times, I probably live there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I guess some people don't think like me. Some people don't think. Um, but yeah, anyways, so I was on my way home. And the couple was entering the building the same time as me, but they were ahead of me. But they saw me behind them. Mm-hmm. So I'm walking, and they enter the building and like close. And the the man closes the door quickly. Oh my god! And he's looking at me while he's doing it, and I'm like, "What the heck? Like, you? I see you all the time <laughs> in the elevator. Yeah. I see you in the lobby. I see you outside the building." You know me. You know who I am. Yeah. So let's not do that. <laughs> so I go up to the door, unlock the door, open up, and I'm like, all right, I'm, <laughs> I got time today. <laughs> so I was like, hey, excuse me, do you mind if I ask you a question? And they were, and the man was like, oh, yeah. And they look like they're like stunned, like sh- shocked, shook. Shook it. Shook it. Looking like. They're doing the mannequin challenge. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, sure, or whatever. I'm like, why is it that every single time I either see you or I'm walking behind you, you literally close the door and act like you either don't know me or that you're afraid? Like, what's what's going on? Mm. And then he's like, low-key stuck. He's like, oh, well, well, you know, you never know or whatever, like just basically trying to teach he's trying to take precaution like the explanation didn't even make sense for real yeah i'm like like i so i'm like dude like please refrain from doing stuff like that like for me specifically like honestly being black in america is not it's not fun because that experience happens all too often folks act like you're like a fucking predator yeah and that's not not what we're doing here i'm trying to get home just like you yeah <laughs> yeah and so he's like oh yeah i understand that but that that's not like what i understand where you're coming from my brother had told me that one time that same couple had stopped him and was like hey do you live here i'm what? like are you what kidding me right now but they really? know you live here <laughs> What the hell you mean do I live here? Yes, I do. Do you live here? <laughs> so he was like, oh, you never know. I, th- I He was like, oh, yeah, like, I think I have the right to ask that question because, you know, you never know. And this was during a time in which, you um, you know, there were, like, frequent trespassers stealing packages and stuff like that. So this is that. I told the man, yeah, I'm aware of that. And we got emails with images <laughs> Of that specific trespasser that kept stealing our packages. That man does not look like my brother. So, like, you need to be cautious about how you talk to people, profile them. He's like, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but I think I still have the right to ask that. I'm like, yo, like, oh my gosh. What if somebody was asking you if you live here and closing doors on you and acting like you're a freaking weirdo? Like... Yeah. That irritates me, not gonna lie. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So, had to just let folks know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dementia affects everybody in different ways. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, first of all, I want to, Jar, I'm sorry that that even happened. Yeah. First of all, like, but to her point, it's just like, you know when somebody lives in your building or not. Yeah. Oh my like, God. I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's just like, it's just something that bothers me. Like, yeah. I, like, <clears> the <throat> first day I was moving in, I already know 
like I don't even know my neighbor's name. Right. But I know not my neighbor, like someone who lives mm-hmm. in my apartment. I right. don't know their name, but I know their pets' names because she was talking to someone on the street and just saying like, "Oh, this is George and this is Frankie." I'm like, "Okay, I remember that." Yeah. So it's like you can easily remember and know yeah, living exactly. with someone mm-hmm. in the same building. Like it's not hard. Like I've recognized a few people already. Even mm-hmm. someone across the street who helped me move uh, move in something in mm-hmm. my apartment. Uh, like I see him, I'm like, oh, I remember you. Yeah. Like, and Ajar brought up a good point. Like, people know what people look like. Yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I the mean, closing, bo- like, I keep oh, my I door be... open for anybody. Yeah, I was like, just about to I say, just... like, I think that's come on in. That would not be a good thing to have. But yeah, literally, because we have a gate currently where we're at, and I feel like anytime there's someone behind me, even though I should maybe be more cautious about it, like if I know they're coming in, or I think I like hold it open. Yeah. Just for them to come in and. Yeah, maybe it's not the best. But come on, if I knew somebody was living there, like yeah. I, for the most part, I have an idea of everybody who lives in some unit, I would hold the door open. Or if someone was at the gate, because I've had it happen to me where I forgot my key and someone will come out and I'm like, can you open the door? I would never be like, no, if you don't live here because you don't have a key. No, come on. Yeah. Again, it's just a uh. certain age. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, but there are there is a certain like age of people that are just like, very stuck up about like who's going where and why it's like yeah. why does that matter to you at all yeah uh i yeah. get if it was like someone's visiting somebody in an apartment and you sure. just don't know like oh i don't know but have them come down to open it but, but still it's yeah. not their right oh. to be the one to have to ask like yeah. why are you here like are you the landlord are you the apartment yeah. owner or like why does it your security is not being infringed upon if yeah. someone's like you know entering this place yeah that aggravates me so yeah you know who's in the right who's in the wrong i think this is pretty easy yep uh ajara you are absolutely in the right on this uh i think um they need to screw them screw them man yeah but uh thank you everybody who submitted (laughs) (laughs) i mean we can go down this rabbit hole i feel like for hours and days like but uh no thank you ajara for submitting that um thank you for listening um and thank you for I, I appreciate all the little pictures. If anybody has anybody they want anything they want to send in, yeah, um, yeah, apartment etiquette. Our our email know. our email right now is pretty empty. A bunch of cobwebs, except for lease agreements uh, uh, that on a. <laughs> Listen, for whatever reason, I got locked out. Like, I put in my email and it says you already have an account. I'm like, no, I don't have an account. So then I put my mom's information and then they're like, nope, you have an account. No, she doesn't have an account. I put my sister's information. I put it in. Nothing. So I said, fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to put my business account on there. (laughs) Yeah, the Sip and Truth business. And then Kane was like, hey, uh, are you... uh, are you using our business information for your apartment? I'm like, I absolutely am. Absolutely. He's like, that's awesome. I like that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, everybody, thank you for listening in to episode eight of The Sip and Truth. Let us know what you think about the apartment stuff. I mean, that's kind of wild. Let us know if you have any crazy, like, apartment note sharing stories and passive well, aggressiveness. No, well, yeah, that too. And if anybody is real good at, like, um, I don't know if I should say, like, interior design or maybe styling a room i don't want i just want someone to do my room for me and then walk in and be like like room makeover i could help you (laughs) like i'm going but well this is what i would like to happen so if anybody is down for this i will pay you to do this i want to go away on my trip and when i come back i want my room to be set up and done and i don't want to have to do anything Mm. so if anybody's so yeah this needs to come out soon if anybody's (laughs) interested in doing this please let me know because um yeah, we'll pay for somebody to essentially decorate my room and set it up with everything I need because I don't want to do it. Yeah. Go get some Duncan. Yes. Uh, plug in Duncan. Pl- plug in Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> plug in Duncan. All right. American Rooms, I'm plugging. Bye. Bye.